Hey guys, Chris here from Life Mind EMS Training. I wanted to go over with you real quick, MedMath drips. So we've done some other MedMath video content. I'm gonna go over drips because in, unless you have a pump, sometimes drips can be challenging. What we're not gonna talk about in terms of titration is the uh, potholes and speed bumps that you power infuse your patient with if you're not using that pump. But let's go over how we calculate drips. So we need to figure out the concentration per milliliter, depending on our drip. And then when we take that per milliliter, we look at our drip set. It's either 10 drops per milliliter or 60 drops per milliliter. So we take our concentration, find our milliliters. We can go over here in this instance, when we build our clock out, we're going to do our 60 drop set. So it's 60 at the top, 30 at the bottom, 15, 45. So it's 60 drops a minute. So it's one drop per second. 30 would be one drop every two seconds. And then here, when you get into the 15s and the 45s, it becomes even more challenging, especially if you were to say 3.75 drops per minute. It's very, very challenging, especially in a moving vehicle or when you titrate them on the fifth floor of a building, take them down the elevator, get them to the back of the unit and start going down the highway, your drips, you're constantly chasing. So it's a range, right? When we talk about this, it's not an absolute don't think you have to have 3.756321 drops per minute. It ain't going to happen. Use the patient's physiologic response, which we'll talk about what titration means here in a little bit. So how you find that is you take the number times the bag milliliters equals a thousand. And then you multiply that by the mixing dose to get your mics per milliliter. So an example, if you had a 500 milliliter sodium bag and 200 milligrams of medication, Two would be the number to make 500 to 1,000. So two times 500. Then multiply that by the dose that you're mixing into it, which is 200 milligrams. So it's a 400 mic per milliliter concentration. So that's kind of the quick street way to do it. So let's take an epinephrine drip, for instance. So you add one milligram of epinephrine to your bag of choice. Let's say it's 100 bag. What times 100 is 1,000? 10. So 10 times one, the one milligram you put in, that's a 10 mic per milliliter concentration. It's a pretty strong concentration. You take a 250 milliliter bag. What times 250 is 1,004. Four times the one milligram of epi is four mics per milliliter. So every milliliter that goes in, they're getting four micrograms of medication. You take the four and you would put the four at the top of your clock. In this instance, you take the 10 and put it at the top of your clock. So it's 500 milliliter bag. 500 times two is 1,000. Two times one milligram, two mics per milliliter. Take a 1,000 bag. 1,000 times one, one times one, one mic per milliliter. That's a very diluted bag. Very good safety margin, not a lot of titration range because you're only getting one mic per 60 drops. That's not a lot. If you need a patient that you need to keep running up to try and get that cardiac output out, you're going to be wide open very quickly. So let's take our 250. That's kind of the more the common one to get you that four mic per milliliter concentration. So four times 250 is 1,000, one milligram of epi in there, four times one, four mic per milliliter. So we put four mics, micrograms at the top of our 60 drops. So every 60 drops are getting four mics. So cut that in half, two is 30, three is 45, one is 15. And then you can break it down even smaller, but I'll be honest with you, less than one mic of epinephrine, not worth your time. So if your protocol says start them at two mics a minute and titrate up, if you're using a 250 bag to mix it, you would start them at 30 drops. So one drop every two seconds. And then that gives you a nice margin that you can go up on. So an easy way starting them at one drop every two seconds is to go one drop a second. You're literally doubling your medication in this instance, but it gives you something that's easily discernible based on time and the drops hitting the uh, column of liquid. So say you have a 300 pound patient that's in hypo hypotensive secondary to septic shock. We decided to administer an epinephrine drip. The protocol calls for two mics per minute titrated to effect using a 60 drop set. How many drops a minute would you administer at two mics per minute? So let's say it's that 250 milliliter bag. So in this instance, we want two mics a minute, 250, four times 250 is a thousand, four times the one milligram here of epinephrine gets us four mics, four over 60 two mics. So we'd be giving 30 drops a minute. So for this patient, the two mic per minute, we'd be given 30 drops a minute, one drop every two seconds. Leave a fed. So add eight milligrams of noradrenaline to your bag of choice. So let's look at leave a fed. 100 milliliter bag, 10, 
10 times 8, 80 mics per milliliter. 250, 4 times 250, 1,000. 4 times 8, 32, 32 mic per milliliter. This is the more common choice. Um, usually the range we uh, say to start them at is 1 to 30 mics per minute. 500 milliliters. So 2, 2 times 8, 16. Pretty diluted. This one you'd be running uh, your half of your max at 60 drops. So you've kind of lost your good threshold here. At 60 drops, you're kind of at the top end here of what most places try and keep on the conservative side of noradrenaline. Because remember in the field, we're giving it through IV access, ideally 18 gauge or better in the AC um, because you can get that vascular lockdown and you don't want ischemic limbs. And then over here, thousand bag, thousand times one, one times eight, eight mics per milliliter. That's a very diluted amount. At 60 drops, you're only getting eight, which is less than a quarter of what our max dose is. So norepi, like I said, most common in the street without a pump is at 250, at 32 mic per milliliter concentration, 32 at the top. So 60 is 32. Most places say start between one to 30. So this can, you could easily start them one drop every three seconds and then work your way up to two seconds, one and a half seconds, one drop every second. So what does titration look like? Well, we see our drip going over here and here we have our patient monitor going across. So this is a septic patient. So cardiac output, heart rate times stroke volume, reduced CO2 from poor perfusion. We see a map less than 65. As a reminder, automatic blood pressures calculate for map. That's the most accurate value. Person has a slight temperature, poor perfusion pleth on the pulse ox, and we start going up. So we're given that one drop every two seconds. Now we're going up to one drop a second. Now we look like we're making a little headway here. So we started out about one drop every two seconds. Now we're up to one drop every second. Now we're getting that end title that's climbing. Our rate's starting to come down. Um, Try and grab another pressure here. Let's see what that map does. And really, this is how you titrate. You watch the patient's physiologic response. Watch the heart rate. Watch the end title. They are very fast to respond. Blood pressure can be delayed. End title, heart rate, very fast to respond. So we now notice uh, maps come up, right? It was, uh, it was at 61. Now it's at 64. So we're definitely uptrending here. That's good. And we're sitting at one drop a second. So that's what? 32 mics a minute. It's kind of on the upper end of our threshold, and we're really starting to see that heart rate come down. We're starting to see the end title come up. Now let's see where that pressure comes back. Heart rate's really come down. End title's really come up. Oh, yeah, we're looking good now. Let's go and hold at that one mic per minute. Let's go and hold at that 32 mics per minute, one drop a second. We're trending really nice now. The dopamine, not many of us are using dopamine anymore, but if you are, again, here's a premixed dopamine, or if you need to mix it, it's commonly found in a 250 bag, 400 milligrams of total in that bag. So four times 250 would be a thousand, four times 400, 1600 mics. So 1600 goes at the top, 800 down at the bottom, 400, 1200, and then you can break it back if you want. So there's that 400 and that 250. So you have a 300 pound patient, hypotensive after ROSC, you decide to administer dopamine. Like I said, not many places are doing this because of the amount of stratification between what the effects are at the different doses, whether it's renal perfusion, cardiac output, contractility, rate, vasculature, but your dopamine comes prepackaged 400 and 250. So it's a 1600 mic concentration using a 60 drop set. How many drops would you administer at 10 mics per kilogram per minute? So we talked about how to convert pounds into kilos in the previous video. 300 divided by 2 is 150 minus 10 percent is 15. So what's that? 135. So 135 times 10 is 1350. So 1350 would be somewhere around 50 drops a minute. Yeah, 50 drops a minute. Let's go ahead and call that one drop a second. You're going to be over in the 1600. The reason we picked this example is because you sitting here trying to find the exact drop range, it, you know, 
you're going to go nuts. You're going to hit a pothole and it's going to be not worth your time. Titrate to effect. Watch the patient's physiologic response. That's how you titrate medications. You have a 184 pound patient, it's hypotensive secondary septic shock. You've decided to administer epinephrine drip. Your protocol calls for two mic per minute titrated to effect. Using safety drop set, how many drops per minute would you administer for a two mic per minute? Well, the first question you have to ask yourself is which bag are you using, right? So we want two mics per minute. So let's say we're using a 250 bag. So 250, four times 250 times one, so four. So we want two mics per minute. We're using a 250 bag, it's 30 drops a minute, one drop every two seconds. So we hope that helped with drips. As always, if you have any questions, hit us up at info at lifelineemstraining.com and we hope you have a great day.